putting the fight in faster than light. Welcome to Cosmopunk. Um, <laughs> hi, we're, 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 do we do three? Hi, we're Cosmopunk. Uh, we're a comedy um, stuff on the podcast. It's like D&D, but in space with aliens. <laughs> uh, I'm Pan. I play Baphomet on the right. Um, so I want you to start. We'll go like left to right then. Alrighty. Well, I play um, Ryder. Um, I'm ne- ah, sorry, my name's Cypher, by the way. I play Ryder. Um, she is a Yosaki Otter. Um, which we'll get into more in a moment. Uh, in the Starfinder universe, they're called the Yusakis, which is an alien race. But in visuals, I guess, she looks like an otter. She is the ship's pilot, and she's also a bit of a ninja. She's got swords, guns, she can disappear. Um, and we've also got um, another furry fella in here. We've got uh, Radar, and he is a, uh, a coyote. I'll, I'll move on to you, Ty. Hi, yeah, uh, I'm Typhon, and I play Radar, who is a cyborg coyote who likes guns and stuff that's that's about him he's kind of puddle puddle deep um <laughs> you know he shoots things gets angry does a lot of screaming coyote stuff yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's about any sci-fi show you've ever watched he's the guy with the gun in the pose he's yeah. jane who's <laughs> jane? jane jane from firefly oh, oh that jane oh, okay that jane. That yeah. makes sense. I've never seen Firefly. He has he has oh gone to the extent of naming his guns though. Anyway, right. we've also got Big Lizard Boy, who is RJ. Me, my character. Me. Who's uh, yes, yeah, so they're basically like the muscle slash engineery type bloke on the like seven, which is our ship. Mm. Uh yeah, that the they're a bit more deep than Ty because <laughs> oh, everyone's a bit more deep that, than Ty. Let's they, they, they have backstory and aspirations <laughs> and a life, and <laughs> then it all went to shit. And now they live with these like cretins on a spaceship. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah, damn. Thanks. Mm-hmm. That's RJ. Tell it how it is. Yeah, for a yeah. all over us, but yeah, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the general the general gist of Starfinder, if you ever listen to like um D and D podcasts like um Nadpod or Adventure Zone or Critical Role, of course, it's that kind of thing, but in space with um a bunch of anthro characters. We uh, you can find us on Cosmopunk.net, um you can find us on twitter.com slash cosmopunk with an S. Uh, other places Patreon as well, yep. Um yep. And you can listen to us. We've put out three adventures now. We started during lockdown because who didn't start stuff during lockdown? But we've been playing together for about uh, over a year now. It's over two years now. Yes, yeah, two, two years. Oh, God. Wait, what year Christ. is it? 2020. Yeah, how did you forget what The year same year it always is. <laughs> <laughs> Still, um, we've been doing it for a long time. Uh, we've kind of figured that, hey, we, you know, we, we think we're kind of funny-ish. Uh, we can yeah. Talk <laughs> yeah, funny looking. <laughs> and we did. Yeah. And it's been, it's been going pretty well. We were enjoying it. Yeah. And we hope that you guys we- enjoy it. It's worth mentioning, we never actually set out to make a podcast. We started off like, we'll record some sessions because we keep forgetting things and half of us don't take notes. And it then it turned into like, recording them for the sake of posterity originally, wasn't it? Yeah. Just like to have. And then we said, oh, hey, we've got some hours worth of recorded audio footage here. Why don't we turn it into a thing? Turn it into like yeah. a radio drama sort of thing. So sat down, edited it for hours and weeks and months. And then the podcast happened. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And that's pretty much how you start a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. We will not be taking questions at this time. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, um, just, uh, I don't know, was there anything like this, Pan, before we started it? Um, Starfinder was a pretty new game when we started playing. So there weren't really many podcasts for it. There's a lot of like D&D ones. They're all over the place. I'm sure like plenty of you guys in the chat probably play D&D. I started playing it only recently. Well, recently, like, four or three years ago just because I happened to stumble upon the podcast and I thought wow this is pretty fun sounding as opposed to my um, previous opinion of D&D which was pretty much everybody's previous opinion of D&D but I got into it I had a lot of fun and I, uh, I met these guys and um, been doing this ever since in space I don't know how we decided um, to add to, well to edit it down to begin with and then to add sound effects on top of it 
I, I don't know if that was a, that was you more so. Yeah, that was so definitely you. Yeah. Completely yeah. original idea from me. Okay. Your your exact words were: "I want to dedicate the next six months of my life to audacity and nothing else." <laughs> I don't do anymore. I don't do anything. <laughs> Ultimately, this is your fault. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah, it's all my fault. Blame yeah. me. Mm-hmm. As is normal. <laughs> So what we want to do today for you guys is um, play a couple of um, our favorite excerpts from the show so you can get an idea of what we're about. Um, and then just talk generally about like what, what the world's like. We're, uh, we're pretty proud of what we come up with. We hope you enjoy it. So let's, let's do a little start off with um, talking about what we actually what we actually do with the show. Um, there's a little bit of lead up to the show. Uh, we didn't, like I said, we didn't start like, actually recording and playing as a podcast until maybe like, two adventures in. So we had two adventures beforehand. Um, sorry, why don't you go into a little bit about what, what we did, what we got up to? What, do you want me to talk about what we did before the podcast or yeah, the, like the first it. episode? No, um, yeah, do you know before, how we got how we got to where we are. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we, we started, um, I, th- I think our characters were created, uh, we started off doing a campaign uh, which was the one of the uh, official Starfinder ones called, uh, what was it, Against the Aeon Throne? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was where we were all level one and fairly new and unsure of ourselves. Uh, we started doing that, fighting the Aslanti, which are the sort of um, common or garden bad guys in the Starfinder universe. They're human. They're, they're, base, they're base, space, space Nazis. Space Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone can punch a space Nazi. It's fine. Yeah, yeah it's, it's fine. There's zero um, moral repercussions for doing that. Uh, <laughs> so we got into a, a fight with them, um, and I think we we stopped doing the campaign halfway through for reasons. Um, yeah. I think it's because wildlife. Yeah, uh, hostile wildlife, and because we didn't really want anything to do with the Starfinder Society because they were kind of. I think the Federation in Star Trek, very goody two shoes, and said, "Hey, you, you you're doing well, guys. Do you want to join um, the Starfinder Society?" And we all sort of collectively just went, "Nah." Not really. Yeah. yeah. And then fucked it off and just homebrewed the next just... four campaigns. <laughs> yeah. It was a stuffy, stuffy club for nerds, and we didn't want any of that because we're super cool. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's, that's, that's a that's word. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I will point out, yeah. actually, if you are thinking of starting your own Starfinder or D&D podcast, homebrew is just a lot more fun. Like, yeah. There's, there's a yeah. lot to be said for stories that are written for you and you run through it, but... Generally, what you find is when you if, like, if you run a podcast or even just a D and D group for any period of time, you start developing repertoire with your friends, and then you want to build in jokes in to riff off that repertoire. And if you're just doing pre-made campaigns, then it becomes a lot harder to do that. So not just that, but also but, you'll get a lot more personalized storytelling. Like a pre-made campaign yeah. will have a bit about how your character is the secret prince of the of the blah blah star system because it's a pre-made campaign. But you, yeah, yeah, you can build yeah. people's backstories into your adventures a bit more. And it feels like a bit more personalized of an adventure yeah. than just something that was written months ago by the people who just made the uh, the rule system. Yeah. yeah. Like, so, like the time we put Baff in charge of a planet. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a good time. Remember, that was fun. Yeah. Remember that time that Baff became a battle station? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, let's, um, let's try and get into the first clip and uh, we'll let people enjoy it and go from there. Ready? Yeah. I have no way to know if this is working or not. <laughs> Guys, yeah, call me to come. There's a there's a big right. message for us on the bridge. Did you record uh, anything bacon, last night? Bacon first, then no, message. no, bring the bacon with you. <laughs> we'll have to get the bacon to you. <laughs> Perhaps she's using she's using a um, one of her psychic hands to drag the bacon along and make V follow it like a like a <laughs> cartoon. Yeah. So the bacon's floating through the air while V follows him, mm. and they both head to the bridge. Okay, so do you open the uh, the vid message? Well, hang on. Did, did anyone record any drunken messages last night? Probably. I don't, I don't know. think so. Oh, my Instagram. Um, well, let's get this first. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll play the message. Okay, so you open the message. Uh, the thumbnail is a picture of Ryder. Um, she's got one eye facing the wrong way. She's flipping off the camera. She's got a bottle of sake in one hand and a big cigar in her mouth. Oh my god, party ought to have had a good time. It was oh, oh my. So you start playing the message, and it's, and it's like, Hey, ladies. So, you probably worked it out now. <laughs> I'm no longer on the ship. I've taken my friend's shuttle, and we've gone to... Well, we've, we've continued the party elsewhere. We've gone to Slipstream, and it's going to be great. And you know what? You people, you, you still owe me a holiday. 
So, I, you're all invited. You can come with me. I did invite you at the time, but everyone was too pissed to fly like a seven. And Radar, Radar, I know you're going to say you were sober enough to fly the ship, but I'm too good of a mother to let you fly and drive. <laughs> She's like half my biological age. <laughs> Either way, come to Slipstream. You're all invited. Yeah, we're going to go on water slides, and it's going to be fantastic. Okay, I'll see you. I'll fucking turn this off. <laughs> and then the seat cuts. Nearly <laughs> <laughs> drunk flying. Can we take a minute to appreciate that performance? Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was good. That was good. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Um, also, so, fuck, fuck, me, right. me's going to save that message. Well, it's first things first. Um, can everyone please roll a culture uh, roll to see if anyone has heard of Slipstream? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, any bonuses for anything? Um, no. no, I've got enough in culture to get this, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't have uh, anything. That's good in because culture. I rolled a two and I have a zero in culture. Right. <laughs> what do you think Slipstream is? It's the turbulence <laughs> created behind the wing of an aircraft. Okay, never Alaska. mind. Uh, <laughs> so, I got that 16. Is 18. 27. 27 is enough. Okay, Baffy has heard of Slipstream. Cool. So, in the packed worlds, there's a big old gas giant called Brathada, and it's got a lot of uh, little moons orbiting it, um, some of which have never ever been explored ever. One of these moons is called Lysander, and it's an ocean moon. Basically, some rich asshole bought an entire hemisphere of this ocean moon, and they turned it into one big water park. They put all of these, like, slides down and log flumes, oh, and they I turned it into a giant amusement awesome park. Mm. Yep. <laughs> they run it a bit like a sort of um, neo-capitalist Disneyland, but hell, it's a hell of a uh, place to throw an after-party. And also, Ryder's an otter. Why wouldn't she go to a water park? Mm. It's a fair point. It's a fair point, but why not just go to Uckus on the lap seat? It's closer. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah no. but it's full uh, of sand dickheads, so it's, it's full of beaches that offer you jobs. She wasn't keen to do that again. It's full of what sand dickheads? <laughs> <laughs> so, either way, um, Ryder and all of her friends have taken the shuttle and gone to Slipstream on Lysander. Um, she says oh. that you guys were invited. You don't have to go. She'll probably be back in a few days. Um, how old is the message? Four hours old. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so, do we want to just let her get on with it? Or do we want to go? No, no we, go. Should, we should go. Like a we, 7 we is a, a fully functional like, many people ocean thought, vessel, so... Let's, let's start with you, Baff. Mm. No, I well, think we should, should we go. go. I, think, I think it'll be fun. Um, also, honestly, I, I know the fellow who, uh, who owns this, uh, the planet, and it's, he's, a, he's a lovely guy. A lot of people give him crap because, you know, he terraform the planet into a water park but really once you go down there it's, it's, it's very nice it's, very, uh, uh, it's a moon not a planet ah uh, moon uh, sorry I say planet moon regardless nice. it's, it's very nice the water's lovely yeah uh, besides you didn't even get a holiday last time you should come with us I had a holiday what are you talking about well, you went to a workshop you went to it, a doesn't workshop. Take a, it doesn't take a week to tighten some bolts <laughs> okay well oh. Carlos you didn't have a holiday with, with us with your friends Okay. It's a nicer time. Plus, hey, it's not our house, so we don't have to clean up afterwards. That's true. Is there parking? Uh, there will be parking. Yeah, moon. I hope they got moon. <laughs> uh, it's it's, well, it's like an I amusement said, the, park. There's going to be a seven giant... is a fully functional like ocean vessel. So wait, no, it's not. Park. Hold on. Yeah. I yeah, but it's ago. Like the seven can function as an actual ship. V, in the same <laughs> sentence, you once told us that you were a rational, upright, proper thinking person. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's, that's never been proved. <laughs> it's never been disproved. I don't. I, yes. I don't think I want to. I want to try just, putting the like no, no. in the water. It's okay. I'm just going to point to the human skulls you're wearing on your belt. I, I don't actually wear them on my belt. Sorry, I have them you... mounted above the reactor. Yeah, exactly. Oh, before before they do anything, though, um, right, um, Baff turns to Radar and goes, By the way, Radar, I noticed you with that uh, 
That young um, Isoki girl. How'd that go, huh? huh? In fact, oh, not, you get, not you get fired. Uh, let it go. The Pine Martin. Do you want me to relay the conversation to you? The highlights? Yeah, well, highlights. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. Wait, the she... conversation highlights were something wait, wait, like wait, wait, this. Wait, 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 wait. Hold so on a second. Hold on a second. I'm going to get in my chair. She's going to sit down like... <laughs> really get into it. Super ready. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Radar, radar is very, very successfully hiding a smile. Um... <laughs> So the conversation highlights went like this. So you're a mech pilot. Yes, me too. Sweet. And then I went away. What? Wow. Oh, radar. You're the most boring. In... How is someone who's half a robot that boring? Honestly, because she cool. literally comes up to my knee. <laughs> oh, that's that's heightest. <laughs> All the better to suck. I think there's a cue to slap V at this point. <laughs> Swiftly moving on. <laughs> no, I, so, guys. I, I, I'm not a party person. I'm not... Really no, but she, she seemed like she was person. definitely was on on your level. I thought she was a. Uh... No, she wasn't. She came up to my knee. I said. Okay, that's again. We're not. I didn't mean it literally. And again, some people are into that kind of thing. I'm just saying, you you could have had a little, you know, a little a little spark maybe. Look, no. Let me put it to you this way: the last bunch of new people we met, we ended up rescuing one of them from a prison moon, and everyone else knew we've met, we've killed. Exactly. Oh, yeah. What more we've been to actually get on with someone? So I'm a little bit sort of hesitant about making friends with people. Back when you might already have to downloading kill. space. Um, Tinder, you could be friends radar. with someone mm -hmm. and kill them later. Just, just, just space I love the idea even... that Baff has suddenly got this idea to try and hook Radar up with someone. <laughs> yeah, uh, Radar is, is going to just literally just dig his heels in at this point. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. <laughs> we've, got, we've all got that one girlfriend that wants to hook you up all the time. Okay, so what is happening here, guys? Are you going to slipstream? I'm all in favour. I all opposed. Shut up, Raider. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a democracy. <laughs> Boys, I'm going to go change. Um, I'm going to lock you out of the reactor room now, so you can't get warm. <laughs> I'm, yeah, Baffy, you're I'm um, myself in. you're going to need to get some uh, some nice swimsuits going on. Those big hats. Oh yeah, she, well she can't use the one she's on the phone fire because uh, you know they've been worn once already. People saw them, so <laughs> they've been thrown away. It's true. Yeah, I and this is also I this is also an excuse for um, Radar to get his Hawaiian shirt and um, shades with the bullet hole in them. Oh yeah, the... Baff take, Baff takes the uh, the robot butler to help her dress. Oh, it's because it's shiny, so you can see yourself in it nicely. That is true. So, Radar, um, you look down at the console, and it would appear that uh, Ryder has given you the coordinates for this place. So you don't, you don't even have to fly there. You just need to press the autopilot button, and it'll take you there. That's amazing. It's, it's almost it's like I have to move all of these flyers for Slipstream out of the way with all the coordinates on it to get to the console. Thanks, yeah, it's, Ryder. It's amazing advertising, isn't it? Yeah. It gets right in your fucking brain. <laughs> No, okay. no, wait, fucking, they, no, no I'm going to... Yeah, <laughs> be, be sober enough to fly. I'm gonna... I like, I like oh, the idea that Ryder God. really doesn't trust um, Radar to fly the ship. She knows that he's a mech pilot and she's got this sort of condescending attitude behind it. <laughs> <laughs> like a race driver versus like an ordinary... L like driver. sort of sanctimonious, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, me can actually pretty well fly the plane. The plane, the spaceship. Yeah, I don't. I mean, oh, wait, I've got four in piloting. I can do it. I just got yeah. twenty-nine for piloting. Nice. Oh That's yeah, well, I know. got. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> also, never mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I okay, can't so radar, that. radar pilot. <laughs> but radar so is a pilot you... who can also pilot Max. So you don't crash into the nearest fucking asteroid twice in a row because oh, radar's true. in the driving seat. <laughs> it's so tempting. No. It's so tempting. So, you fly the Leica 7 all the way to Brathada. It's um, your typical sort of gas giant. It's got these big swirling clouds, red, green. And then you have the little blue marble of Lysander orbiting it. Then it starts to get a little bigger, and then a little bigger. Before you know it, you're in orbit. What was the name of the uh, owner, by the way? What is the name? The what? The owner of the, uh, of the moon. I'm probably going to definitely drop, do some name drops here. Um, oh, wait, can... Do you mind if we call him um, Fleabert Gaxley? Fleabert Gaxley is the really rich dude that um, you guys used to get into the party. Yes. Oh, it's okay. all interlinked. I love it. It's all interlinked. So Fleabert Gaxley is the owner of Slipstream Amusement Park on Lysander. So, you're now in orbit over the moon. 
you can't see the surface because there's thick clouds um, just over the entire atmosphere. The whole planet, is, uh, the whole moon is completely overcast. Oh, so, look what do you do? Oh, maybe look at the brochure. Is that no? Yeah, look at the brochure. Is that normal? I'm not taking this down until we've got an actual reading. Yeah, we do a thing where you hold the brochure up and then look at the actual thing and then hold it up again. Yeah, yeah. And it's like beautiful blue skies and sunshine. Shit hole. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Is well, there, like instrument beacon for landing. It's the job of a brochure to sort of upsell a place, but yeah, um, as soon as you get into orbit, uh, a little there's a new message waiting for you, and it's uh, from okay. Slipstream Amusement Park. I'll press it. Okay, you press it. A little um, holographic cartoon mascot appears on the um, on the projector on top of one of the dashboards. Oh, it. it looks a little bit. It looks a little bit like, um, you know that fish, three eyes? <laughs> but it's green, it's got comical deedly boppers coming out the top of its head, and it's got a surfboard onto one of its fins. <laughs> it looks straight at Radar and says, Whoa! You got something in your eye, my dude. I instantly hate this. <laughs> <laughs> so, either way, uh, proceed down to Shell Bay 1, and see you by the pool, my dude. And then there's a sort of flushing noise as it goes back into the hologram emitter. <laughs> D don't worry, Ty, that character's dead. You'll never see him again. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> Not if I have to do with it. I'm going to make I you actually, actually, I buy so many posters. Disbelieve. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the gift shop? So um, either way, there are directions down to a um, sort of big shuttle parking lot in the amusement park itself. Uh, you have the coordinates... On the um, on the flight computer, it's just a matter of flying down and landing. Right. Well, I'm going to go get my Hawaiian shirt on and my shades. Okay. V doesn't own any beachwear. Beth has come out. She's not wearing any of her clothes, but the the um, the robot butler is carrying all of her clothes for her <laughs> in a suitcase. Yeah, and, wear, and wearing her hats. Or have they got like one of those? those big holiday trunks that you put all of your room your clothes in like the travel trunks with stickers oh, yeah. all over it definitely definitely hey uh, hey Bath. Hmm. what do you think oh that is absolutely <laughs> darling now, now radar likes to party <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna roll to bluff <laughs> <laughs> you are bluff <laughs> <laughs> uh 29 yeah, yeah I, don't think, yep. I don't think oh, I can beat that. You look so good. Really nice. It's <laughs> Thanks, I think the, the bullet holes and the shades offset it. You know? I think it really looks like a nice rugged look. Yeah. I mean, he's still got his, like, bionics on under it. And he's still wearing combat trousers, but it's a Hawaiian shirt. And it smells bullet, slightly lighter for some reason. The, <laughs> bullet hole, the bullet holes over the eye, that's real. Not the machine one. <laughs> she's uh, <laughs> she's ordering new clothes for Radar online already. <laughs> like that looks. She's talking while ordering. That looks so good. I'm so glad you're getting a new outfit. Yeah, it's, it's great. I, I've had this forever. I can't even remember where I got this from. Really nice. Oh, <laughs> I just have to go get something. And she toddles away. Yeah. <laughs> to get a delivery. Okay, so you're landing now, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who's um, who's sort of in what position? I guess um, Radar's in the cockpit. Where's V? Where's Baff? Uh, I guess V's up in the cockpit as well, just like... Yeah, Baff would be in, in the, in the oh, I don't know, we call it a hallway, looking out of the window, um, as we, as we land. Cool. Okay, so, um, Radar, please make a piloting roll. The piloting roll is... I closed my character sheet. Um, oh, no. <laughs> We're going down! <laughs> oh, it's not good then, is it? <laughs> 21. 21. Wow. I want to see a barrel roll. <laughs> I mean, 10 is everything is normal. Yeah, we, right. we crash horribly, uh, don't have a party. It's great. Yeah, and that's the end. No, no, no. Um, so yeah, radar sort of very slowly takes like a 7 into the atmosphere. There's a little bit of burn coming off the nose as um, you start to slow down. You start descending into the clouds. Uh, still suspicious about them clouds. I'm going to do a scan. Okay, you do a scan. It's it's water. Yeah, but like life signs, population. Yeah, there are life signs down there. Um, the population is quite high down there. Hmm. Uh, That's it. 
Uh, there's nothing to press. This is a um, sending these messages. And this is a this is something different. This is a, a little red light flashing on the dashboard. It's um, an ice warning light coming from the engine. Um, now, Rado, you're quite experienced. You know that these old ships, when they descend into atmosphere after a long time in space, the sensors act up sometimes. Um, think there's ice. They usually stop when um, they get a little bit deeper down and the atmospheric thrusters kick in. Is there All right. Ice well, the what I'm going to do then is I'm going to abort the approach. You're going to abort the approach. Okay. Yeah. So, bring us back up to thing, and then I'll turn to V and be like, I think there's a problem with one of these sensors on the PO on the front. Can you get into the engineer and just hit uh, it with a hammer or something? What, what was the exact error? I wasn't. Uh, well, I'm getting an ice build up, which is weird for a moon that's supposed to have been terraformed. Uh, hold on. Let me go hit the deicer with something heavy, and then yeah, just just work, just probably. inject the uh, fresh batch of deicer through the system. Uh, should clear it. I'm gonna go into the engineering console and just run, just like cycle the deicing system, which is a natural thing that real planes have. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> cool. Okay, so um, well, first of all, uh, radar, can you make another piloting roll to abort the approach? Nah, it's easy. 25. Well, you don't need 25. to abort the approach. You could just stop and hover. Uh, yeah, or, you know, we could just not, and we could use aerodynamic thrust and save some fuel. I, I guess. It's up to you. What do you want to do? I, I'm, I'm keeping us uh, at altitude. I'm not hovering. Okay. So okay. so you're still sort of at altitude, just cruising along? Yeah, the we're, we're Concorde right now. Okay, cool. V, uh, are you going down to the engine room? Uh... No, I can I can cycle the DI for the console. Okay, you can do that from here. Yeah. Right. Um, can you make an engineering roll to um, cycle the DI Uh, fifteen plus ten. Uh, twenty-five. Okay. Radar. Yep. There are now two red lights on the dashboard. There's another ice warning from a different engine. Why are we letting you drive? This never happens when ra the rider drives. It's because we've got 25 engines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are quite a lot of engines. Um, we have seven okay, there, engines total. Okay, there are now three red lights on the dashboard. So, okay, uh, I'm taking us back into space. A little bit, this is a little bit wrong. Yeah. Okay, you try to get to, like, seven to fly buck up out of orbit, but there's something wrong with the engines. They're not giving you enough lift. There are now five red lights on the dashboard. All right, V, I've got four ice warnings with a thrust vector issue. Something's going wrong. V, uh, you hear a noise. You know this noise. It's coming from the engine room. It's the sound of churning pipes. Like a seven's guts are retching. Oh, what do you God. do? I specifically blame radar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm going to go... You're the engineer. Engineer it. Shit was fine until you got to drive it. I still blame you. I'm going to take... I'm going to go downstairs, and I'm going to take every shot I find on the... It might be best for the moment to <laughs> land, so we can find what's going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for to say that. Yeah. yeah. Alright, uh, can I run diagnostics on the exact issue, then? Um, not from here. That's something that you'll need to go down to the engine room to do. I will go down to the engine room. Okay, these on the way down to the engine room. Up. Can we land before, like something happens and we end up falling out of the sky rather than... Even even if the engine's cut this thing's quite aerodynamic, it can glide Yeah, it's basically yeah. a big wing I did tell you that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm just going like, the has, the like a 7 is the aerodynamics of a brick taped to a rhino Yeah, but it's, it's got <laughs> forward momentum wow. so it has some lift <laughs> it's, a, it's a magic space shepherd like... And also it's in the hands of a fairly good pilot yeah. Okay, I'm I'm gonna go to the engine room and hook into the console there. Okay, V, you go down to the engine room. Um, now this is a place we haven't been on like a sun before. Um, I'm imagining it's a bit like the um, the reactor room in Chernobyl. Uh, am I right or am I wrong? It's not quite that bad. If you imagine two toroidal fusel reactors, like uh, let me find a picture. Like U-boat engine room is what I'm seeing. Like, there's pipes everywhere. There's two yeah, it's basically like that. There's, there's pipes everywhere. There's two massive fusion reactors next Holy to each Holy shit, other. this looks bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool as <laughs> well. Okay. So V is in this, um, this engine room filled with pipes. All of the pipes are churning. They're shaking slightly. They're not the, the, the reactor, it's shaking in its housing. That's Something concerning going very, very, very wrong. no moving parts. <laughs> 
It's still shaking. Maybe if you um, found the pilot, he can throttle back. Uh, no, we could. Uh, okay, right. I'm gonna com link through to radar and tell him that I'm going to temporarily low powering reactors and switch to auxiliary batteries because funky shit is happening and I don't like it. All right, are we going to be able to maintain hype or should I look for somewhere to land? Uh, yeah, you can still run off batteries, just not for too long. I would really, I would really feel better if we landed before trying these. Well, I feel better if the reactor wasn't shaking. So radar. Hang on, a klaxon is going shaking. off right in your ear. There's a loud bang from the right-hand side of the ship. You don't know what the fuck that was, but it didn't I sound good. I think we just had a backfire? Did you, just, did you just hit something? No, I didn't just hit something. Mm. Did I hit something? There's a bang <laughs> from the left-hand side of the ship. Uh, Another klaxon it. is blaring. Right. Right. Okay, click on. I've made a pilot roll. I'm going to dip the nose. We're going through the cloud layer. I've rolled a total of 30. Cool. Simultaneously, I'm sending... Uh, fly guy out the airlock to go get a visual on the engines. All right. <laughs> Goodbye, fly guy. <laughs> he, he, he's got is magnets. He, he is he going to be able to keep up with the ship in atmosphere? No, uh, um, he clings to the side of it. He's got magnets in his way. Okay. Um, yeah, V, you send fly guy out the airlock. Um, easily clings onto the outside of it. You establish a, a vid feed, yeah? Where are you watching it from? Uh, engine room. Just in the engine room. Okay. There is a lot of ice building up on Leica 7's engines. It's caked on. Uh, can you roll perception, please? Uh, oh, 19. That's not bad. Uh, plus... Is that a pass? Uh, it's 19 plus 7, so 26. 26 will do it. Okay. The ice is just on the engines. It's nowhere else on the ship. It's almost like it's cased around the engine cowlings, and it's stopping the turbines from spinning. Right. Radar. I am going to. Sorry. Uh, right, uh, I'm going to roll engineering to vent from one of the pipes to find out what's making it shake about. Okay. Uh, yeah, roll engineering. Yeah, ooh, 17 plus whatever, 10, so 27. For reference, normally these are filled with coolant. Right, okay. Um, I'm getting extra cold. Well, they're not filled with coolant anymore because one of them has just popped and it's blown steam in your face. What? It, it doesn't, it doesn't what, what? damage you, but it just makes you stumble back a bit. Coolant pipes. Right, so the, the cooling system is overheating, but the engines are covered in ice. Yes, there is a lot of um, pressure and heat building up inside the reactor, and now it's got nowhere to go yeah, because the engine is frozen over. Oh, no. I know. Yeah. Like I said, we... Uh, uh, fine, I'm switching through to auxiliary backups. You guys We're can't going call to it a magic invasion that and... something cool happened. Like, no, 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 like, now that I've thought about it, Cypher's actually quite correct. That's like, how it would work. Radar. Yes. Up in the cockpit, the ship is not handling as it used to. Can you please make a piloting roll? Yes. Come on, good dice. Uh, that is 16 plus 12, 28. 28. 28. I've rolled nothing below 16 for these pilot rolls. It's been great. No, you're um, doing very well. Yeah, I am. Um, uh, also, I'm going to turn to Baff and be like, we sh you should probably actually buckle in. After you buckle in. Radar is buckling Baff, in. Baff buckles in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Hang on. V, mm -hmm. I don't know how much altitude we've got left, so you might want to lifeline yourself to something in there. This is an engine room. <laughs> You All have right. got 6,000 feet before you reach sea level. Oh, shit. What's the rate of descent? Well, you're gliding in, so, I yeah, let's say 100 feet a second. put the landing gear down. Like I said, this boat actually functions as a boat, so... So why would I put the landing gear down? Because they're hydrofoils. 5,000 feet remain. Oh, fuck. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to keep energy, so I'll keep it in the dive until we get very, very close to the surface, whatever it is, and then I'll flare it and see if we can nose in. Okay. Um, well, the Leica 7 has now become a glider. There is yeah. no thrust, so can you please make a piloting roll again, please? Oh, come on. Oh, that's lower. That's 8. 20. Uh, 8. Oh, okay. One sec. What was it? It was 8. Sorry, it was 20 in total. 20 in total. Yes. Okay. Um, Here it comes. Right. You suddenly get a, a huge waft of turbulence under the ship. It, you, it takes you completely by surprise, and you overcorrect. Like a seven is now spinning. It's in a flat spin, heading downwards. We don't have any vertical surfaces, do we? Um, yeah, we there do. are control surfaces. Yeah. Do we have a rudder? 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, counter it with opposite rider and stick. Okay. Um, can you roll piloting again? It's going down. Eighteen. Oh, one sec. Oh, no, that's good. Okay. okay righty. You correct. Yeah. You're out of the flat spin now, but two thousand feet remain. Radar, right. what do you say to everyone? Okay, uh, I'm going to switch off all of the engines and fuel pumps and everything, and then over the comm, we're going down, brace, brace, brace. 1,000 feet remain. And then I'm going to wait until we get to 500, and then flare it, flatten out the, the dive, and see if I can settle it on some kind of surface. Zero feet remain. What? Minus 1,000 feet remain. Did what? you put the landing gear down? Minus 2,000 feet remain. Fuck! Hit something, but it's not water. Yeah. Whatever the hell it was, it's shaken all of the electrics on the ship, so all of the lights flicker. Like a seven skids on her belly along the ground, and suddenly you landed. Is this ice? No, I don't think this is ice. I think we're in a seabed. Are we so, a submarine now? Well, no. <laughs> shut. Everyone, shut up. Every, anyone hurt? No, no. I'm fine. Fine. Actually, that's a good point. Um, Baffy and, Ra and Radar, you were strapped in. Yeah. V, what yeah. about you? V has nothing to strap into in the engine room. Yeah, just waiting for the Oh. Well, so they, just got, they, just got, they just got into their hammock and called it a day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think your hammock is going to be a very good restraint. <laughs> no way, I want to see V tied up really strong up in the, in the hammock and can't get out. Because yeah. she's, she's gone shit wild during the time. <laughs> That is either a massive joint, or V got into their hammock. V, um, <laughs> can you make a survival deck for that? <laughs> Oh, that's uh, 16. 16, let's see. Uh, V, you have come out of your hammock the second um, Like a 7 touched down, and you've slammed into some pipes. Um, um, right, yeah. Radar, you're not allowed to fly anymore. What the fuck? You take coming over the con. V, yes. you take V, you take two points of damage off of your stamina. That's nothing. It's it's fine, it's big chunky vesk boy. Uh, not allowed to fly anymore. It's... So that was part of the first episode. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it. It was <laughs> a lot of fun to make. Um, it was more fun to listen back to actually. Yeah. It does get better every time I listen to it. And yes, thank you for the Fs in chat. We did all die after that. There's yeah, no more. Everyone's, everyone's yeah, that's that's it. First and last episode yeah. of Cosplay Punk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we we all made uh, new characters. Um, <laughs> all this <laughs> art, forget it. It's done. It doesn't matter. Yeah, don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> totally not. Two other campaigns to come. Oh. <laughs> Three. Yeah. Three so, other yeah, campaigns yeah. to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the one thing as well. Because we started um, the podcast... About maybe halfway into our into our like sessions, or maybe a third way into sessions, we have a lot of back backlog. So don't worry, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys have started listening to us or decided to um, to subscribe, thank you, really appreciate it. Um, if you're on iTunes, you know, drop five stars. It sounds really good, but hey, it really helps us to get out there, and you guys get to have more Cosmo Punk. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. So what we'll be doing from here on is um, we've had um, all of us picked out some of our favorite clips. And for a bit from the show, uh, this is from some Ooh. from before this episode, some from after, uh, and I'm going to be throwing those in there. Um, we're, we can talk about some of our favorites as well. Like, for example, I'm going to go ahead and throw in the the pie merchant bit. So you guys go ahead and. Oh no! <laughs> do we want to do some setup for this? Yeah, just yeah, so yeah. they have some idea. Otherwise, people are going to be like, "Why would there be pies in space?" But you got it. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Do you, do you want, want to do it, Cypher? Like, go on. You, no, you're, you've got the better diction. You do it. <laughs> All right. That's so our excuse every time we want Ty to, that, that someone to say something is just default to Cy because okay. you're Cypher. He's the voice of the party. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Okay. So we go to um, a strange place. It's uh, the moon of a planet, but it's got a weird sort of medieval society on it. And we have a look around, and there's a little town in there that's. Uh, Got a lot of street vendors in there, one of which is selling pies. And uh, Ty was GMing uh, during this one. So we all decide to go up and talk to this pie vendor. And uh, hilarity ensues. Side quests ensue. So, yeah, yeah take, take it away with the, uh, with the clip. Yeah, give it a run, Pan. 
I like how you guys are like, give me a pen. Like, I'm not like frantically searching for this. Hold on a second. <laughs> how have you lo- You had like three days. You're the one that told us to play this clip. Oh, I get yeah. it. Calm down. What? Sorry? Whoever's the one that sort of Return market stores got solar plate. Yeah. You look around and you can't see one selling that kind of tech. That's good. Sierra's reckon there'd be someone at the market that would sell it, so. Hmm. You can ask another vendor, so they know. Yeah, we could look at yeah, um, yeah, yeah, selling yeah. something similar, maybe. Or we could find the one selling mashed potatoes. Or you could get some more mashed potato. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm not fine because someone vented out the airlock. It turned into a an actual sentient being. You want to eat that? <laughs> <laughs> I've eaten sentient beings before. Okay, you know what? Never mind. We should go. <laughs> Right, Beth wanders away and I speak to the first motion she sees. She just walks away. <laughs> this is rapidly becoming an episode of Red Dwarf. <laughs> I've eaten sentient beings before. Uh, sir, excuse me. We're looking for the, the fort. We want to speak to um, whoever your leader here is. What's that, love? I'll be quick about it. Well, you've got to shift these pies. Mm. Oh, what kind of pies? No. <laughs> well, my little lady, let me tell you, we've oh. got your beef pie. We've one got second, your beef. this won't take long. Oh. We've got your beef and potato pie. We've got your beef and onion pie. Ooh. And then what I like to call the big pie, which is, it's a pie with three other pies in it. And those pies <laughs> are beef, beef and onion, and beef and potato. So you've put it's all the other pies inside another pie? Yeah, and now what you might say is that because of the way the pies are shaped, which is basically like a drum, if you put three drums inside a drum, there's some wasted space and you're not getting your money's worth. Now I've got an answer for you, my lady. Basically, what we do is during the cooking process, we fill the gaps in between with mashed potato and gravy. <laughs> oh, God. V, I found you a pie. I've got my head in my hands. I'm just like, I just... <laughs> One second, back. <laughs> well, those of us who like to eat and can are interested in pies very much yeah. ah you've come to the right place how much grease uh, do we have to pay you in order to get our hands on a pie well these go for about the super pie is going for a gold right now which is a really really good price a gold but I'm guessing you you're not from round area three are you uh, no no we're not yeah, you ain't got any money have you no 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 right hmm. but you want a pie uh, yes. So you want a pie? We don't want well, pies. Speak for yourself. You, you don't eat anyway. <laughs> I cook. Well, your little, your middle, <laughs> little metal lady there might not like want a pie, but you know, what about you two? I, I, I definitely little, do. Little like, and large. I, I haven't eaten in quite a while. <laughs> Neither has my friend here. Mm. Well, suppose you could do me a. I'll give you a pie, but you owe mm. me a favour. A favour? A well, favour. What sort of favour is it? What kind of favour? Well, so the pastry guild basically up their rates. Now, they can only do this. <laughs> so Go on. One, one, no, wait, one, I gotta be one second. <laughs> Give me a second. Fucking <laughs> side quests. <laughs> we have found a side quest anyway. <laughs> the fucking pastry guild. <laughs> <laughs> right, because now I'm just in this big oblivion. This whole thing's oblivion. With, with like yeah, we are just in the around. <laughs> We're in Skyrim. Um, the camera's usually really on your face. It. I've accidentally created Skyrim. Yep. Yep. Anyway, <clears throat> right, so the pastry girls basically. Uh, <laughs> for God's sake, Ty, come on, get it together. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that was a that was the pie. That was the pie adventure. Pyrim, I like that. I just Pyrim. Like that. Oh. You missed a trick, Ty. I did. Oh, I wish I could retroactively go back and slap myself for missing that. Mm. Um, but this this whole scenario, um, and any of you with further Games Masters in the chat can probably relate, it's the throwaway NPC that gets rapidly out of hand uh, that your part, your players then spend three hours talking to and you have to think on your feet and make things up to fill out that world. Um, hence... Pastry Guild? Um, I don't know what drugs I'd been taking, but clearly I need more of them. Um, <laughs> so that's that's what happened there, really. Uh, from there, the the players managed to get back on track, I feel, um, and continue with the adventure, uh, all of mm-hmm. which can be found uh, in the podcast. So no, no further spoilers there. Um, 
Oh, we, we it was a, a little more like you know. I think. Um, no, wait, that wasn't that episode, and I can't give a spoiler because that's a spoiler. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Spoilerinos, we can't do that. Yeah. No. We're good at this. <laughs> One of the things about um, the characters that we play is that for some reason it became a running gag that they just never seen animals before. They've seen, they've seen animals, just not. Was. Yeah. Well, no, it's that they, they'd seen animals before, but every single animal that they'd seen had tried to attack them. Hmm. That was it. So every single animal had been hostile. So, yeah. Re- referencing back to that first campaign that we didn't finish, it was like you land on a planet and instantly all the wildlife just attacks you, just millions of them all the time in your face, you mm-hmm. know? And it just, it was a little bit. Yeah, bad, which, is I guess. Kind of, which is kind of ironic because a lot of our characters look like animals. So yeah, <laughs> that's fine, I guess. That's so why why not have a world where there's like actual wildlife that doesn't immediately try and target you? You know, <laughs> then obviously we try and kill it. Yeah. So of course the first thing the players do is try and shoot at it. V. Yeah. Baff's doing her background magic. Ryder is definitely trying not to inhale all the small small microorganisms that live in the air. <laughs> Um, yeah. you're, you're looking about, and your your natural Vesk instincts, Vesks are predators, ultimately. Your instincts kick off here, and you look, and the, the tracks that you're following, the creature that's making them, is there. <gasps> is it edible? It's a deer. What's a deer? Edible. Meta, it's a deer. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what the fuck is that? Oh, monsters! 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 Right, is going to aim <laughs> a gun at it. <laughs> well, yeah, every single animal we've ever encountered does either attack us or try to eat us. <laughs> I think we, we all like, yeah, we all like. Go on, guard. It's not looking at you. It's just, roll, roll initiative. It's doing dumb deer things, which is it's basically just sort of sniffing at the ground and eating some some grass. Oh, hang on, look, it's, it's eating the grass. I, I don't think it's a predator, guys. I think we're okay. I'm gonna shoot it in the chest. Wait, wait, no, what? <laughs> no! <laughs> Be, no! <laughs> it's just an animal. Mag- I, give you, I give you a gentle magical moment, and your response <laughs> is to annihilate it with fire. <laughs> I think it's just natural wildlife here. I've. You've, ne- you've never seen, like, an animal? Uh, you've never seen an animal like that. Oh, they used to have them all the time. Oh, back at. Uh... Where are its feet? What? No, they have very small feet. Look, I'll show you. Just gonna, she's going to do like a, a, a tiniest clap to get its attention. You startle the deer. Oh! <laughs> now can I shoot it? I rolled the dice and I got a one. <laughs> oh. Okay, but V is actually going to shoot it now. Don't, no, what? No, no Baffling. <laughs> Are you really going to shoot it? It's food. And she pushes you out of the way. I had just potato. Eat. V as, is like eight times your size. You no, as, like, as they start to like charge the gun, like she pushes the gun to one side. Like no, no, oh, yeah, just you're just still going to be up. firing a gun. The deer's going to bolt. Yeah, but we don't <laughs> want to shoot the deer. Yeah, that's true. I want to shoot the deer. Yeah, actually, no, that's it. She uses a psychotic hand to push the gun away as he shoots. All right, you're you're lining up your shot, V, and the muzzle's pushed away. Ray, Miss <laughs> Ray, you look so tasty, and it's got we such an interesting are... head. Just think what the skull looks like in that thing. V, it's you have enough skulls. It's I just, do not have enough skulls. A regular deer. We don't, we don't even shoot know. things unless they attack us. Exactly. We're not it's monsters. Lo- it's looking at me menacingly. It's just it's, chewing, it's, V. Do you, do you say it ran it's, off? It's pranked away, yeah. Oh, let's just let's just move on. If we see any more of those things, if they attack us, you can shoot them. Fine. Only if they attack us. First. First. Don't try and loop all your way Fine. around this. No, no game hunting. Fine. Probably really attracting people anyway. <laughs> You don't even know what it is. What exactly? What's the better way to find out? It's a boomalope. Boomalope? <laughs> <laughs> Named after the noise V makes when spotting one. <laughs> a lope. <laughs> anyway. I guess if, I if we like just feet. travel... <laughs> it had fine feet. They were just... They were like little hooves. You know what They were all pointy weird, and stabby. weird, oh, tiny, know. useless feet. Well, I wouldn't. I don't think it'd be good for kicking or anything. I don't think you kick very well with them, but they—they they look nice.
Uh, so yeah, that was probably one of the only times <laughs> that you guys managed to stop V from killing something. But I think the last clip is just another example of NPCs getting latched onto by the team, and then me having to go, or whoever's GMing, having to go back and work them into the story a lot more. So <laughs> this, <laughs> sorry, the, the chat is confusing me a lot now. But uh, stop yeah, so. Out. Last clip, it's kind of a short one. It's just another example of a random NPC getting brought into the campaign and everyone immediately imprinting on it and, and the gym having to go back feet. <laughs> and create an entire backstory for them. Roll the clip. There's a knock on the door. Guns up. What was that noise? <laughs> there was a knock Afco, on the door. Afco and open the door. Would you do calm down? This is an establishment of business. Oh, sorry. Uh, hello. Someone has designed that basically a medium oh. to large sized android uh, snake. It is glossy it's a delivery snake. Glossy <laughs> black girl. What kind of dick wouldn't give a delivery snake arms, right? <laughs> but it wouldn't be a delivery snake if it had arms. Yeah, right? yeah. you're right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it'd be a <laughs> it. All right, okay, fine. And it's got a little base cabinets now. And it says, a message for the crew of the Lanka 7. Uh oh. Oh, oh. thank you. Uh, who is it from, may I ask? Hi, okay, James of Pericles requests your attendance. Would you like to come in, and or...? The snake just presents you with the data pad, upon which there is a message of an invitation, oh. and it reads, Friends, I request your attendance for an informal lunch aboard my vehicle, the Fourth Dawn, tomorrow at Half Cycle. I would very much like to discuss a proposal of mutual interest with you, well compensated. I am docked at the hangar 122AX, and this pad will serve as way of invitation should you be of a be of interest to you. Warmest regards, Iago Pericles, third of his name, Master of the Unseen Light. Sorry, Master of the Unseen? Master of the Unseen Light. The other thing you'd know about him is that he's a Cassantha, and they have a general predisposition to giving themselves very long and pretentious names. <laughs> In person, you can the ego. So, okay. do you accept his invitation? The snake looks up at you. Uh, mm. Please, would you, if you wouldn't give us just a moment, uh, your. Sorry, what's your name? I do not have a name. Okay, I. I'm a snake. That makes me. <laughs> very uncomfortable, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> call it Bob. <laughs> Bob the snake. Yeah, <laughs> if you yeah. would prefer, you can call me Bob. I. I would prefer you choose your own. You know what? That's fine. When you come in, have a drink. My friends are... Okay, Bob. <laughs> yes! <You're wonderful. laughs> okay, Bob, that's great. Why don't you oh, come and have a seat? Buffy, who's a this? Uh, oh, this, this, isn't it? this is this is Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. <laughs> God. Ryder, Ryder picks it up in her arms. Uh, Ryder, it's the same size as you are. You were probably prey species. I know! <laughs> 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 like just cuts back to like instantly like half a second later and right the snake's coiled around her neck and all over her. Oh no! <laughs> I know <laughs> Baffy, can we give the snake a job? Absolutely. Maybe. <laughs> I mean I don't know what he'd do. He's I, I don't want to offend you, Bob. I am already in Oh, he's already uh, employed. Um, That's true. Employed. You mean employed, right? Employed. Warning, unlicensed reptile detected. Eliminating. What the what? No! <laughs> 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 about, about butler bots. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's worth mentioning at some point earlier in the series, we, we got our own robotic robot butler sort of thing, which was a repurposed kill drone. Yes, we took all yeah. of the guns and ammo out of it and just gave it a mop and have it clean our bar that we, we recently got. We demeaned it further by welding a bow tie onto it. Yeah. <laughs> right, guys, we're coming up to um, the end of our slot now, so do we want yes. to uh, farewells? Oh, man, this has been awesome. Yeah, we're really yeah. enjoying this. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, do we want to do uh, uh, final plugs before we before we go, Pam? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's, um, yeah. Drop around Twitter's. Um, Cypher, you can go first. Okay, so I am at Cypher the Box. Uh, that's my Twitter. Um, Ty, have you got one? Uh, no, no, I just I leech off of you guys, so I'm just. Oh, fair enough. I'm just here. 
Okay, and yeah, we've got uh, the Cosmopunk one, which is um, at Cosmopunks with an S. It should be Cosmopunk, but uh, I don't know. We're working on that. Yeah, we're trying to get yeah. that one. Um, Someone else took Cosmopunk first. You can find RJ um, at RJ... Uh, underscore Pilot. Underscore Pilot, yep. No, I couldn't remember the underscore. And I'm at uh, Dungeons and Bears. Cool, and uh, thanks, guys. Hey, yeah. Thank you very much yeah. for hosting yeah. us. Yeah. This has been yeah. great. Yeah, it's good fun. All yeah. right, I, uh, I think we're... Uh, we're going to hit the bar or something like that? Yeah. Or a virtual bar where I can get a virtual drink for my virtual nerves. <laughs> Is that a virtual yeah. bar in location virtual world? Yeah. Uh, uh, we're just going to keep talking until they kick us off, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sort of like, do, do you hear the record scratch sound effects? Mm-hmm. And that's going to be the yeah. end of it. No, what so, happens is Discord just closes itself on your computer, and that's the open kick. Those, uh, <laughs> those giant intergalactic space entities, eh? How about mm-hmm. those? Yeah. <laughs> we try to avoid those wherever possible. Yeah. yeah. And, and if, yet. If you do pick up uh, the pockets at the moment, you will come into um, RJ's campaign, which is Until Proven Innocent, which yeah. Is, yeah. is where you'll, you'll meet Bob the Good. Snake. And it's awesome! Yes. Mm. But um, yeah, um, Arjo's campaign is Until Proven Innocent. That's the third in the series. First one we ever started um, recording with was Hydrophobia. Yeah. Uh, the next one is Engines of Hatred, which is Typhon's one. Yes! Yes. <laughs> My magnum opus! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the yeah. Then, and then yeah. we go from there. Um, we put out the show uh, once every other week on Thursdays. When we remember. When we remember. Yeah. 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 Thursday, yeah. good, but yeah, when we remember, we put the show. <laughs> um, what fact, even our days anymore? We're highly professional. Yeah. I'll, actually, mm. if you go to the Twitter, you can see um, Bob the Snake. Mm. Mm. He was the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> no spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. Uh, but describing the existence of a spoiler is in itself a spoiler. All right. <laughs> Thanks very much for listening, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah, it was yeah, awesome. Uh, That's all so for much. now. Go away.